There's also more evidence this morning that all is not right for Vladimir Putin and his inner circle. A senior Russian official in Ukraine is lashing out at his country's top military commanders, calling them incompetent after a string of losses on the battlefield. CNN's Fred Pleitkin is live in Kyiv with more on this. Fred, what are you picking up? Hi there, Kay. Well, we are picking up that there do seem to be rifts within the Russian leadership as far as the prosecution uh, of this uh, military uh, operation that the Russians uh, um, have started. Obviously, the war here uh, in Ukraine. And you look at, for instance, some of the close allies of Vladimir Putin, like, for instance, Ramzan Kadyrov, the strongman of Chechnya, who for a very long time, since things have been going wrong for the Russians on the battlefield, has been saying that big mistakes have been made and has been urging the Russian military leadership to do things differently and, and quite frankly, to hit Ukraine even even harder than they have in the past. The big question is whether or not the Russian military is capable of doing that. And the person really under fire a lot right now in Russia is the defense minister, is Sergei Shoigu. There's several sides that he's catching a lot of flack from. It was so interesting to see because you really don't see a lot of this criticism out in the open as much uh, as far as Russia and pro-Russian forces are concerned. Uh, there was an installed figure uh, in the Kherson region, a, a local military uh, official there who essentially said that, that the defense minister should think about shooting himself. That's something that's absolutely uh, unheard of normally if you talk about uh, the Russian sort of military hierarchy. But you can see that right now the Russians understand that they are in a lot of trouble as far as the mobilization of extra forces are concerned, as far as a lot of things that are happening on the battlefield are concerned as well, with the Ukrainians winning more and more territory. And it's quite interesting to see the Ukrainians, Kate, they are, of course, also very well aware of the fact that the Russians are having these problems. In fact, the defense minister of Ukraine uh, just a while ago, he called on Russian soldiers to lay down their arms and saying that they had been lied to and had been betrayed. So a lot of issues right now for the Russians here in Ukraine, Kate. Absolutely. Fred, it's good to have you there. Appreciate it. Joining me now for more on all of this, retired Army Brigadier General Peter Zwack. He served as a senior U.S. defense attache to the Russian Federation. And Simon Schuster, he's a Time magazine correspondent who's written extensively about Ukraine and President Zelensky. It's good to have you here. Simon, so let me start with you. Just um, what we were talking about off the top, which is Biden's warning, and Arlette was talking about kind of what she's hearing from sources within the administration now. This warning of Armageddon, um, if you will. Stark, blunt, yes. Exaggerated, though? Well, I, I think 1962 with the Cuban Missile Crisis was a lot more dramatic. There, I think we, we were talking about um, a kind of spiraling exchange of uh, massive nuclear weapons, city buster bombs between two superpowers. Mm -hmm. You know, here we're talking about something quite different. Um, Putin has been warning uh, repeatedly, and his allies have been, have been warning about um, the use of tactical nuclear weapons, which would be kind of battlefield nukes that Russia could use potentially to attack a Ukrainian military base, um, or potentially, you know, the, the decision-making centers uh, in, in Kiev uh, that, that Putin has also talked about potentially striking. So the government quarter, right, President Zelensky's office. Um, you know, th these are also nightmare scenarios, but I, I do think that the Cuban Missile Crisis was um, more dangerous and, and much closer to the brink of, you know, total uh, annihilation for, for the world. Um, and it's interesting to see the way um, President Zelensky has, has responded to these threats. Mm -hmm. um, he's basically saying to President Biden, OK, if you think we're that close to the brink, then do something about it. So take pre preventative action by imposing sanctions, by uh, giving more weapons and, and defensive weapons to Ukraine, such as anti-missile systems, for example, so that Ukraine can defend itself. And that would potentially dissuade or deter Putin from taking that step. So uh, I, I think Zelensky very, very cleverly is, is um, passing the buck back to President Biden and saying, if you see Armageddon afoot, then you better take some action and help us even more. That is interesting. General, can you speak to what would the use of t a tactical nuclear weapon on the Ukrainian battlefield look like? Um, yes, just uh, following your first question, uh, remember yeah. that President Biden was a young adult during the Cuban Missile Crisis and 1960s. Uh, uh, too. And I think he and among many of us old Cold War guys just thought we would never just just committed ourselves never to come back to this. And here we are. Uh, I don't know how you define hyperbole and all that, but it, it was definitely a wake up call that while unlikely, all these uh, potential potentialities are out there um, uh, as far as nukes and tactical use. 
Um, I believe that uh, you use one, you've opened up Pandora's box. We don't know where we will go from there. Uh, and there are low yield. They're often called low yield tactical weapons, can be fired from um, um, uh, artillery, rockets, dropped by aircraft, uh, missiles. Um, a, 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 a low low yield one would be around one kiloton. How about uh, 1,000 tons of TNT, approximately? Uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, uh, were hit in 1945 with, uh, with uh, 10 to 15 kiloton yield devices, much bigger. But one, a one to two or three kiloton device can do enormous damage uh, to uh, a, a city blocks, uh, small towns, um, uh, certainly positions, uh, and, and spread. Um, the Russians have estimated 1,500 to 2,000 of them in small yields. Um, but as I said, you drop one, I think you've opened up Pandora's box. I think the Russians know that. The condemnation will come down hard for them, not just from the United States and its allies, but also from the world. Yet it is a course of action uh, that I think is increasingly being looked at under a Kremlin that is beleaguered and its own mind under siege. Yeah, and let me actually ask you about that, Simon, really quickly, because the Washington Post is reporting uh, about kind of what's going around, on around Vladimir Putin now. The Washington Post report is that an unnamed member of Putin's inner circle confronted Putin directly over his handling and botched handling, if you will, um, on the battlefield of the handling of the war in Ukraine. You think there is little chance that this kind of direct confrontation, if, it, if you will, is going, will, will convince Putin to change course. Why? Well, I, I certainly don't think that's good news uh, right. uh, because the people that Vladimir Putin listened to before the invasion, we're talking a, a year or two ago, he had a much broader circle of advisors that he would sometimes convene with and, and take their advice on board before making big decisions. All those people were pushed out of his immediate circle a long time ago. Uh, Putin got very isolated. He isolated himself from his uh, formerly close advisors well before he made the, the disastrous decision to invade Ukraine. And now the people that are, uh, would, would be speaking to him and potentially, uh, as, as the Washington Post has reported, uh, confronting him about some problems with the war, those would be the ones who are even more hawkish than Putin. So if someone is coming to him and saying the war is going badly, those would be figures like Ramzan Kadyrov uh, or, or some of the other you know, ultra hawks and nationalists who would encourage Putin to go even further, be more aggressive and indeed uh, use tactical nuclear weapons. So you know, if, if someone is coming to him with criticism, it doesn't mean that they're trying to tell him to slow his roll and walk the war back. I think it's quite the opposite. That's, I think that's an excellent point and perspective that needs to be put out there. Um, Simon, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming in.